All right, I think we're live. Um, <laughs> hello and welcome to Apex Instant Tips episode number 125 brought to you most Fridays at 12 Eastern time. I'm your host, Anton. Today, it may be clear, we don't have any uh, support <laughs> in this. Uh, so it's just me hitting go live now. <laughs> but we have with us two very special guests today. Hey, many of you know from the past episodes of the show and a new member of the In Some Cinematic Universe, uh, <laughs> James. Hey, Jason, how are you? Hey, thank you for having me, Anton. It's good to see you, Hayden. Uh, thanks for coming, Jason. So, yeah. So, Jason, th this um, invite to you was spawned by you uh, cornering me at K-Scope with uh, an issue. We were eating lunch. We were eating lunch at a very big table. Yes. And it was an issue that something I was I was uh, certainly intimately familiar with because um, uh, in some uh, and me in particular helped write the the data packager that came out in I don't know was 21, it? 21 2, I think twenty one two um, which is a great feature because um, it, it really it, it aids you in fully implementing your application across um, across across workspace um, taking any kind of data that you need to take with you. Um, so you use it a lot, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm always trying to help people and they frequently come to me and say, hey, I built a proof of concept on apexoracle.com on my free workspace and I want to bring it to my cloud account and it's got data and I don't want to have to re-enter all that data. How do I do this? I'm like, ah, we have the Apex data package. You just go ahead and use that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it works perfect every time, right? Well, yes, until, um, you know. The end users were turned over to use it and they went to insert a record and they found out that there was a problem with a primary key uh, or there, you know, they got an error message that they didn't understand in the Apex app. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, here, let's take a look at, I'm going to share my screen and we'll point out exactly the scenario that you're talking about. And I think it's something that a lot of folks probably um, run into um, that they've We've changed the way we we deal with primary keys. We either use a GUID or we use an identity column. Right. With the trigger, with the GUID, and now the new features of, of Oracle Database make it so much easier, right? Just use an identity column. It's simple. Right, right. But the data packager doesn't know anything about data, about identity columns. Right. Um, Therein lies so, the problem. Yeah. So let's go ahead. Let's take a look. We'll, we'll, we'll quickly... Um, get into this i'll start my timer we'll 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 show the the issue um and then we'll we'll provide a solution because uh well we 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 wrote it we might as well provide a solution so let me kick off the timer um so hayden what would be the way to get our data to come along with us uh you can use data package manager that's it exactly so we're going to create a script um data package it'll be AIT 125 data, well, that doesn't really matter that much. And we're gonna use this table, the person table, that's the one we're talking about. Click next, it's really easy. We won't remove it after load in this case and finish. And it creates this great little script, script for us, AIT 125 data. If we look at it, there's not much to it. It just says load the data. The data is somewhere, but it's magic. We just load it. So now, theoretically, if I drop our AIT 125 person table, so let's just go ahead and drop it all together. Um, the data's gone, the table's gone. All we have to do is install the supporting objects. We get everything back. So what we can see right now, if I reload this page, table's not there. Yeah. I install supporting objects. Next. Move my clock. Let's see if I can get it to click. There we go. Um, install. All right, so now when I refresh the page, everything looks great. This yeah. is it, right, Jason? Exactly. It looks perfect. Hey, we're done. Problem. You're welcome. I got you. Got your data moved over to Oracle Cloud. Right. I edit that, no problem. But when I go to create a new one, the sequence has not changed. I put in something here. I click Create. Unique constraint. Right. So to be accurate, it's not that the sequence hasn't changed. The table was recreated with the identity column, which starts back at one and at one, one already exists. Yeah. And, and the other thing about it that's really that makes this really tricky um, is that identity column is associated with a sequence. If we take a look right here, we've got this sequence, but that sequence number is going to that name changes every time you create the table. So yep. 
people don't know what the name is in your production environment. Right. And so. it becomes a stumbling block of like, oh, how do I fix this? And if you can imagine, what if it wasn't just a single table? What if it's multiple tables? What do you do then? Right. Yeah. So now you've got to figure all this out. You've got to learn it So what we did was we provide, we're providing a, a um, fix to this. Um, we've written a little package and I'll go ahead and pop the code in. Um, and I've made the, made the code available. Let me see. I can, I, I even put a banner here. If I have no idea how to do this. Let's see. Um, ah, here, here we go. That's where you can get this code. This code. So I'll leave that up. We're going to go back to our installation script. And we're going to add one line to it. Well, I suppose one statement. Um, this right here. It is the insum data package util increment identity columns. And you just pass in the, the table name that you want to do it. If you want to do the entire schema, you can just leave this off. Just boom, get rid of that. It'll do everything in the entire schema. Um, but here we'll do we'll add this one line. It's going to look for any identity column in this table and fix it up for us. Okay, so let's apply that change. We'll drop the table again. Before I drop the table, I'm just going to point out this is 93171. Um, we'll drop our table. And we're going to observe that as a different sequence. Right, right. So now when I go back to here, I've got um, table doesn't exist. We're going to return to our installation scripts. We'll install uh, supporting objects. Let's see if I can get that button to click. There we go. Install. Boom. All done. We'll go back here. So it was 93171. Now it's, it's something different. 93199. I, I don't know what it is, but with any internal luck, to Oracle database, yeah, yeah. with any luck, we've actually taken care of our problem. And now if we go here and we add a new row, create it, and we can see we've added the new row. No um, errors. Yes, that's exactly how it should be. Perfectly right. smooth. It's the way it should have started. <laughs> right. And in fact, the way I've done this in the past to fix the problem is just a loop, a select statement of whatever next vowel from that sequence name, if you discover the sequence name, and just increment it that many times to end up with the sequence being ready for the next value that wouldn't conflict. Uh, but this is far more elegant. So thank you very, very much. Oh, thanks. Um, and I'm going to point out we've made our five minutes um, even without uh, production support. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, we've added a couple extra little things into this package. So if we go, I'm going to just point out really quickly with this package. Um, uh, it's the in some uh, dollar data package util. If, if you don't use identity columns, but instead you use regular sequences, you've got a trigger and sequences and so forth, and you need to implement those, we're giving you the same kind of thing. You can tell us what's your your table.column name and what's the associated sequence. We'll take care of those sequences as well. Um, there's a couple other little utilities in here that I use. Um, there's a way to disable foreign key constraints. If you have a pigtail on a table, for example, you, you're doing self-referential, you know, you might be putting these in, in an order that, that doesn't work. So you need to disable that constraint, put it back on. So there are a few additional um, bonus uh, features within this, this package. No, that's great. It's exciting. That covers all the gaps that I was aware of. All right. Um, Do we have visibility as to when this might make uh, an official Apex release? Um, well, I don't know, but I guess we'll bring it to the development team and let them know that we have a, a perfect fix that doesn't require any solutioning. So <laughs> let's see if we can bring that in. Right, right. Yeah, it would be certainly nice if this this line just got added to um, to the script. Yeah. With the in some name and everything for the package, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yes, yeah, we'll definitely make sure that we have an opportunity of reviewing this with the dev team and making it, seeing that it makes its way into the product at some point in a future release. Um, great. Uh, so I'm going to go back to, I actually have a little uh, wisdom of the week. Uh, um, let's see, I'll leave that banner up. Why not? Um, so this is something that uh, I actually came across in a different industry but I think it applies for, uh, for ours. Um, and that's that a, uh, um, a bad test checks to see if it works. A good test checks all the scenarios to make sure it meets the spec. And a really good tester delights in making it fail. Hmm. 
Um, That's true. But again, the technology space that we're working with, with the Oracle database and cloud is moving at such a pace that we release a great feature with your help. And it worked perfectly well then. And then a new release of Apex or Oracle database comes out that does things differently, hence the identity column. And then a problem pops up where we haven't you know, kept pace with that. And it's just great that we have this flexibility in Oracle database to make these changes pretty, pretty with a lot of agility. Well, I appreciate that. But I do feel that you, you meet the qualifications of the great tester. Because you're really <laughs> delighted in bringing this to me, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. Anytime. Thank you for sitting down to finish your lunch with me. Uh, yeah, that was great. Uh, in fact, um, it is definitely time time for my lunch. Uh, um, okay. Same. Uh, all right. Well, um, I think folks have wasted a perfectly good 11 minutes with us. Um, anything else from you, Hayden? Uh, just going to say that... Per uh, Jason's uh, suggestion, we're going to uh, do our best to include links to um, Apex Forum um, posts for each episode. So uh, beneath each uh, YouTube video, we're going to create a forum post for it, uh, add it beneath the video description, and uh, it, it can be a good um, utility for any kind of follow-up from the Apex team because it is so often the case that uh, our episodes um, solicit some kind of feedback from the Apex. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll be on there. We'll be able to answer any other questions pertinent to this topic and even talk about any other opportunities for new features even. And of course, plug the Apex Ideas app. Right. Yes, that's definitely <laughs> a plug on this show. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everyone. Um, be sure to, if you like this video, uh, like this video, tell your mom about it, send her a letter, uh, all those things, uh, and we'll uh, see you next week. All right. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you, Allentown. Thank you, Hayden. We'll see you next time. Have a great weekend.